Can a diet that's mostly fat actually help you lose fat? You're gonna find out. This month, we're gonna try a 30-day challenge on the ketogenic diet. The ketogenic diet is a way of eating where 70 to 80% of your calories come from a healthy fat source, and only 5 to 10% of your calories come from carbohydrates, and 20 to 25% come from a protein source. So when you look at the balance of your food, you're gonna be eating a lot more fat. The benefits this has is it helps our body switch from glucose metabolism, so our bodies are naturally using glucose as energy, to fat-based metabolism. So our bodies are actually taking fat, breaking it down into ketones, and using that for energy. I'm a little nervous to do low carb, guys. L low carb has always sounded like a really dirty word to me that I did not want to partake in, but I'm interested to try it. I'm nervous that I'm going to be, um, I'm gonna be a little hangry. As a registered dietitian, I think the ketogenic diet is extreme and it's hard to follow, but there's a lot of good research that shows wonderful health benefits. The other concern too is how it's gonna impact my digestion. I'd like to see some weight loss. I feel like I'm trying different diets always to see, you know, what works. I'm excited to see if I can actually go through with the 30 days. I think it's always nice to incorporate challenges. All right, 30 day keto challenge begins now. Eggs. Bacon, my eggs were cooked in the bacon fat and butter, and then a side of avocado. All right, so we're starting the keto diet today, and I just wanted to measure my ketone levels in my urine, so we have these little test strips. You measure it up against this to see, this means you're not in ketosis, this means you're actually in ketosis, and they're detecting levels of ketones in your urine. Mine currently is nothing, so that makes sense. I haven't started it yet. So we'll see how this changes over the next couple days and I'll keep you guys posted. Okay, keto week one is over. And what a weird diet is all I can say. Cause I feel like I'm eating the greasiest, most indulgent meals, but I think I'm losing weight actually. I lost a lot of water weight in the first week and it really surprised me because I've been eating fat, fat, fat everywhere. I don't know, I don't mind tracking. I, I think for some people it could be a pain. So I've been trying to stay below 20 net carbs a day. Um, <laughs> you can see me doing some math because to figure out how many net carbs something has, you look at the amount of carbohydrates and then you subtract the amount of fiber. So that gives you your net carbs. If it sounds complicated, I'm just plugging things into an app and letting it do the work for me. So yeah, the tracking for me has been just kind of an interesting experiment and in getting to learn more about the food that I'm eating. Something that is interesting about the keto diet is that you can in fact drink on it. I do think that is a nice trade-off is yes, you have really low carb intake, but you can still drink hard alcohol, um, no beer or wine. It is nice to be able to go out and still have a drink with your friends if that's a thing that you like to do on weekends. I have not been very keto strict. There's been carbs. There's, there's carbs every day and sugar. Not gonna lie. I don't know, keto's not for me. Here's what it is. I don't eat dairy and I hardly eat meat, so it's really hard for me to get to that ketosis state based on my current diet. All the fat's a little much for me. I mean, I had, a, I had two spoons of coconut oil just to hit my fat content. Here's what, here's a positive thing about keto. It's taught me to label read. It's really interesting to see like the carbs, the net carbs, fiber. I've never really paid attention. So it's been, it's been good to actually look fully at the, the nutritional benefits of the few package items that I eat. So I've really approached it in, can I create a good macronutrient balance when I'm eating? So do I have protein? Do I have vegetables? Do I have a good source of fat? And I've been trying to make the fat that I eat a little bit higher amount than I normally do. My energy levels, which I was really curious to see how they would be impacted, those have been pretty consistent. One week down, three more weeks to go. Who knows how this is gonna go. One thing that is blowing my mind about keto is how much more money I'm spending on groceries. I used to spend $65 a week at Trader Joe's. I just did a run today and it was 95. Um, so I think that's because usually I stock up on a lot of sweet potatoes, more veggies, and now I'm really having to have an animal protein with every meal and that really adds up. Just finished my run and the real thing I wanted to test with this keto diet for the month 
was I was really curious to see how it was gonna impact my endurance. Sometimes when I fatigue during a run, even if it's three miles, my legs start to feel really heavy, but that never happened, so. Hmm. And look at that. <laughs> We're doing it. Sorry if this is gross. <laughs> What I have noticed that's been pretty interesting about being on this ketogenic diet is my energy levels and my desire to eat. So while I do think about food pretty frequently throughout the day, I don't have this really intense hunger that I used to have on my prior diet. The best thing that I've had on this diet is Vanessa made lemon bars and those were insane. Vanessa's lemon bars were delicious. They're so good. I don't know what she put in them. I do like the keto dessert options that I've made. So I like those lemon bars that I made. Those are really good. Lemon bars. Lemon bars. Lemon, lemon bars. bars. Mood wise, I don't feel, I don't feel bad because I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm fully like going into keto or ketosis. I've had a lot more meat. So my digestion, to be honest, is not on point. I will say this though. I'm not terribly hungry come dinner time right now. I feel really good. I feel consistent. I feel like I'm getting the best sleep ever. Um, yeah, I sleep really hard and I don't want to get up in the morning, which is unusual for me. One thing I am doing is taking Hum's Ripped Rooster Supplement, which has seven keto. And the supplement's kind of designed to just help your body process fat more efficiently. So it's kind of just like a helpful boost in your keto journey. I've been really <laughs> fixated on sugar and I was dreaming about M&Ms last night and today. Sarah, that would be great. No, what you got there? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> what the? <laughs> you guys. I'm feeling good, um, mainly because I'm not 100% doing keto as correctly as I should, but I still haven't had any grains for the whole month of July, which I think is quite impressive for me. The one thing that I am worried about as far as my gut goes is just the idea that with so much fat, we're gonna tip off the diversity and I'm really gonna start to grow out these bacteria that are eating fat primarily and that are starting to eat bile acids and things like that. So in the back of my mind, I'm just thinking like, oh God, my microbiome is gonna be shifted and potentially negatively impacted by this diet. No! I'm eating raspberries, and I can't be on a diet that makes me not eat raspberries. Nature's candy. Mm -hmm. Day 30. Still got it. Here's all the pizza you that it. everyone else ate. Aww. Here is my salad. <laughs> Last week of keto. Keto's finally over, thank God. What I learned from keto is that it's really hard to eliminate an entire food group, such as grains and legumes. But I did learn how many carbs are in things that I never would have thought of, that being fruits and my coconut water and pretty much everything that we eat. So not that I'm gonna continue to count carbs, but I'm definitely more aware. I personally don't think I would ever try keto again just because it, I found it so challenging because I don't eat meat. I was eating so much more meat this month than I normally do. So in the last 30 days, I lost five pounds, which is not bad considering I was eating butter, bacon, um, coconut oil, lots of fatty things <laughs> every day. And uh, I was still able to go out and drink with my friends on the weekends, so yeah, it's weird to have lost five pounds considering all of that was still allowed. I feel like I will take away from this that I can live without eating as much bread and should enjoy more healthy fats. My overall take on keto is I liked the way it impacted my energy. So a lot of times when I get hungry, I get very irritable, I get cranky, maybe even mean, and that didn't happen. It was just a very even energy and then I was when I was hungry I was hungry and I ate something that was high in fat but I don't think it's something that's sustainable or realistic for the long term the keto diet is something that I would recommend but in small periods of time I don't think it's something that most people should go on for an extended period of time 
I think if you have certain genetic variations, it can actually be a detriment to you to do a keto diet, especially if your body's not able to process and convert saturated fats in an efficient way. But I do totally support eating higher amounts of fats, lower amounts of processed carbohydrates, and just being aware of your macronutrient balance making it a little bit more fat and vegetable heavy versus carbohydrate heavy. That's the end of the 30 day keto challenge. If you like this video, go ahead, give it a thumbs up, give a comment below and let us know what you thought and hopefully we'll see you again on the next 30 day challenge. Okay, I have completed the keto, I'm gonna do one more. <laughs> First one, retake. The best part was eating cookies. <laughs> Bye-bye.